Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Super Screencastify Activities for Schools. This session is part of a series of free webinars offered every week or two by the Stark Portage Area Computer Consortium, or SPARC for short. SPARC is an information technology center up here in Northeast Ohio where we support about 30 school districts. However, this webinar is open to everyone and we'd like to welcome all the people who have joined us live today or who are watching this recording in the future. Uh, my name's Eric Kurtz, and I will be your uh, presenter today. I'm a uh, technology integration specialist here at Spark, as well as a Google certified trainer and innovator. And all of my resources can be found at my website, controlaltachieve.com. Uh, this particular session today, all of the resources for this session can be found on our Spark Tech Integration website at tiny.cc slash spark, S-P-A-R-C-C, 241. And if you go to that link, which is probably where you're at already, if you're watching this live, you're probably already on the page. Uh, but if not, uh, when you go there, this is the page you will get to. And um, on that page, that you'll see the live video now that'll be, that will become the recorded video in the future. So you can always come back to this page later and see the recorded video. And below that, you will see quite a number of resources there. Uh, there's a slideshow, there's a link to install Screencastify, and then there's several blog posts that have lots of additional resources that we're going to be referencing throughout this today. In addition to that, there is a live session chat document right below there uh, that would give you a chance to jump in and ask questions or share resources and help each other. I'll do my best to keep an eye on that doc during uh, the webinar. So if any questions come up, I will try to incorporate those into the training. Uh, below there is the session evaluation. Oh, we always love to get feedback from you guys uh, to improve these webinars. I would encourage you to fill that out afterwards. And then once the webinar is done, I will be updating this final thing, which is the session quiz. Um, the uh, the Each of our webinars uh, have a quiz at the end of them that if you take to show that you watch the webinar um, and you pass the quiz, it will generate a PDF certificate of attendance for you and email that right to you for one contact hour that you can turn into your school for professional development hours. And again, I will add that link after the uh, webinar is done. You'll have to, of course, refresh the page at that time to, to get to that. All right, very good. So that's our page for today. Let's go ahead and get into our session. So today we're gonna to be talking about screen casting in your classroom, and we're gonna specifically be taking a look at a tool called Screencastify. Now certainly that's not the only tool out there that does screen casting. There's, there's so many out there. So, I guarantee you a lot of the stuff we're talking about today, you could take and apply to a lot of different tools. Having said that, I really, really like Screencastify and I think it's just that perfect match for what most any school is looking for when it comes to doing screencasting. Um, so we're going to talk about what, what it is. We're going to talk about installing and configuring Screencastify. Real simple to do, but the first time setup, take you through that. And then just the basic use, you know, how does it work? What buttons do you push to get it to work? The majority of our time today is going to be spent on, so what? How can we use this for education? How can we improve teaching and learning? How can students use this to communicate and be creative and critical thinkers and collaboration and all those wonderful things that we always talk about? So that's going to be the majority of the time. Now, I'm Maybe a little ambitious today. My plan is to show you seven ways to use Screencastify in your class. So this is supposed to be a one-hour webinar. <laughs> if, if I don't get all seven in, it might just go a little bit longer, but I'm going to do my best to try to get um, all seven of those um, examples in here today. Uh, what do you need for this session today? Basically, you're going to need to have the Google Chrome web browser on a PC, Mac, or a Chromebook because what we're doing is we're going to be installing a Chrome web extension. That's what Screencastify is. So that means it needs to be running on a PC, a Mac, or a Chromebook for you to uh, do that. Uh, this is an introductory session. So if you don't have any experience with these things, that's fine. You, you'll be perfectly fine. We're starting from square one and working our way up. So let's go ahead and get into it. As a final reminder, tiny.cc slash spark241 will have all of the resources for this session. All right, let's get going. So first thing first, Screencastify setup. So what is Screencastify? So it is a uh, Chrome web extension, meaning it's like an add-on tool that uh, will record your screen and or your webcam 
and or both together, and of course your voice. Um, so it allows you to record what's on your screen, and if you want to, you can throw your webcam in there as well. The free version of Screencastify will let you record up to 10 minutes at a time, which typically, well, for everything I'm describing today, is perfectly fine. However, um, the folks at Screencastify do offer a uh, premium version that has uh, unlimited recording, has a few extra features that allow you to do some post-editing as well. And um, they actually gave us a promo code that I'll be giving out at the end of the webinar for anybody that wants to use that to get a discount on their free, or excuse me, a discount on their paid version of that. Having said that though, everything I'm showing you today can be done with the free version. Um, just wanted you to be, to be be aware of that. Um, so it allows you to record for up to 10 minutes for free. And the beauty of it is it'll save that video right to your Google Drive. Now you can save it other places as well. But since a lot of us are living in a Google world, it is so convenient to be able to just save that video right to your drive, especially if it's Google Apps for Education or G Suite for Education, because you have unlimited storage and videos can take up a lot of space. No problem at all. Boom. Uh, do the screencast, let it save right to drive. You've got it. You're ready to turn right around and share that with others. Okay. So first of all, we've got to get this installed. As I said, this is a Chrome web extension. So you're going to have to go to the Chrome web store to install that. Um, and I do have a link right below the video today that will jump you straight to that. I've also got a link here in the slideshow. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install this. I've already got it installed on the account I'm presenting from. So I'm going to pull up a different account here. And on that account, I'm going to go ahead and do the installation so you can see it from scratch. So let's go ahead and pull up this other account here. And I'm going to head over to the Chrome Web Store. Now, um, you can just follow the link. Boom, that'll get you right there. But if for any reason you don't have the link and you're like, well, how do I get to that probably the easiest way that I usually tell people to do is if you open up a new tab in Chrome and you click on the little apps button in the very top left hand corner, you'll see a link to the Chrome web store there. From there, you can just run a search for Screencastify. And there it is. It's an extension. And you just go ahead and click on the Add to Chrome button. And it will say, are you sure you want to install this? And you say, yes, I am. You'll click Add Extension. And it will go ahead and install that for you. So that's the first part of the process. We'll let that do its thing in the background there as it is installing Screencastify. And there we go. Simple as that. It's done. Now, what you'll notice is in the top right-hand corner, I now have a teeny little film strip icon up there. That is the Screencastify extension. And that's where all Chrome extensions go. Whatever the extension might be that you use, that's where they go. Now, we'll come right back to this here in a second. Let me come back down and pull our slideshow back up. There we go. So after you've got Screencastify installed, which is very simple to do, there is going to be a first time, one time only setup that you need to go through where basically it's going to ask your permission to run. And it's going to ask three things to use your camera and your microphone, to save to your drive and to record your browser tab. And so we do want to go through that. I'll just show you real quick what that looks like the first time through. So let me go ahead and bring that back up. We've got Screencastify installed. So what I would do is basically I would just go ahead, open up a new tab here and go up and click on the Screencastify icon one time to launch it for the first time. Now again, this is what's going to launch that initial setup. So let's go ahead, I'll click on Screencastify and it's going to launch me right into that setup that I talked about. So first thing it's going to ask for is the rights to uh, access my uh, microphone and my camera. So I'll say, yep, let's set up camera access, hit allow, and there we go. First thing done. The second thing it's going to ask for is where to save to. And again, like I said, I think saving to Google Drive makes the most sense. You can have it save locally to your hard drive. That is certainly fine. You can also upload the videos straight to YouTube afterwards. There's a, an integrated YouTube option to upload them. Um, but I would say initially saving to Drive makes the most sense because again, no matter where you go, the video's there. It's safe in Drive and especially with education accounts, it's unlimited. So I'm going to hit next to say, let's save it to Drive. And here's where it's going to ask me to give permission for that. So it asks you to sign in. You go ahead and choose your account. This is my fake John Smith account here that I'm using for today. And it says, do we have permission to save to drive? And you say, I'm going to allow that. And there we go. That was the second permission. The third and final permission is tab recording. That allows 
Screencastify to record just a tab inside of your Chrome browser, which is really useful for a lot of the stuff we're going to do today. So I'm going to click Set Up Tab Recording and again say Allow. And that's it. Now there is a little demographic thing at the end. It wants to know, are you an educator? Are you a student? And so you certainly can click through that. That perfectly fine. Say, yeah, I'm an educator and uh, grade school. That's K through 12. And there we go. You're all done. All right. So that is the Screencastify setup. I'm going to go ahead and we'll go ahead and close out of that guy and pop back over to my normal account, which again, I've already got it installed. So just wanted to show you what that initial setup was like. All right, very good. So now that we've got it installed, what we want to do is we want to talk about the uh, basic use of this. And again, the idea today is we're going to be looking at hopefully seven <laughs> different ways to use Screencastify. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the simplest of those first, and we're going to, I'm going to kind of do double duty. So in a, uh, of my seven things I'm going to talk about, the first one I'm going to talk about is creating instructional videos, which is the most common probably that most of us think when we think of screencasts is, oh, I want to do a, a quick you know, tech video to show somebody how to do something. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and use that as my example to take you through the basic use, just so you can see what the buttons look like, where do you click, how does all that work, and then we'll get into the more sophisticated, advanced, uh, creative ways to use Screencastify. Okay, so here's basically what's going to happen here in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Screencastify extension, and it's going to pop up this little window here. So you'll see this in just a minute. And at that point, what you'll do is we'll choose what we want to record. And there's three options tab, desktop, and cam. So tab means you're just recording what's inside of that browser tab. Now that's really nice because what it means is it doesn't grab all the other stuff. It doesn't get the bookmarks bar. It doesn't get your task bar at the bottom. It doesn't get any of that other stuff. So it makes a really nice clean recording if you're just wanting to record what's in the tab. If you choose desktop though, that's great too. It grabs everything on your desktop, which is fantastic. Um, if you need to you know, move between multiple Chrome profiles or bring up other windows while you're doing your recording. Then there's also the cam option, and that's basically just going to record your webcam. So actually, it's not going to record your screen at all. You may have thought Screencastify is just for screen recordings. Nope, it's actually a great way just to record your webcam. And we'll see some examples of where that would make sense. All right. Uh, below that is a spot to choose your microphone. Usually it picks it up automatically, but if not, you can choose your microphone. And then a little bit further down, there'll be an option where it asks if you want to include your webcam as well. Now, remember, you can just record the camera, or when you're doing the tab or desktop recording, you can choose to have the camera embedded in one of the corners. And so I'll show you what that looks like, but that's where that's going to be. And then finally, you hit start recording. At that point, what's going to happen is it'll start recording and you need to do your demonstration or your narration or your explanation, whatever it is that you're wanting to do. Now, while that's going on, there are some drawing tools and I'll show you all of those in the bottom. Oh, it's actually, it's actually it's the bottom left-hand corner. I lied in the slide. I will update that later. Sorry about that. In the bottom left-hand corner of the recording window, there are some drawing tools uh, that includes things like using a pen to draw on the screen, using an eraser to erase what you drew, um, or wiping the whole screen clear. There's also a great show hide focus tool, which basically darkens everything out and puts like a spotlight on your mouse and follows it around, which is really nice. We'll see that here in just a minute. When you're all done, you just click Screencastify's extension one last time and you choose stop and that's it. It'll stop the recording and it will now play that recorded video for you so you can see how that went. Since we've set it up to save to drive, it will start automatically uploading that to Google Drive for you. And there'll be a little button to the right that says copy link. And you can click on that link and it will give you the link to give to other people. So it'll create a shareable link for you that you can then submit through Classroom um, or you can put you know, on your website or you can email out or whatever you want to do to share that. So that's the basic idea. That's pretty much how the process works. So let's go ahead and try that out. Like I said, for the first example, I'm going to start with something really basic and then we'll kind of ramp this up as we go. So um, instructional videos. This is probably one of the most common ways that people use screencasting, and that is if I'm maybe um, you know a, a tech person for the district and I want to show teachers how to do something, I can do a real quick screen recording for Technology PD. 
Or if you're um, a teacher and you want to do some flipping with your students, you want to record some instructional content that they can watch outside of class, fantastic, really easy for doing that. So that means, you know, kids can watch this ahead of time, but it also could be great for reinforcement. Maybe they need to hear something a second time, or maybe it's enrichment. It's things to go above and beyond. Or like I like to say, it also includes being, being independent, meaning that, you know, if I'm a teacher and I need some tech help, I don't necessarily have to wait for Mr. Kurtz to get to me. Uh, I can watch these videos that have been created on my, and I can watch those on my own. So let's go ahead and try this out. This will be our first example, uh, just a nice basic instructional video. So for this example, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open up Google Classroom because timely. Uh, we just had a big classroom update yesterday. So if you're watching this in the future, this is old hat. But for those of us that are living in the present right now, um, we just got some really neat classroom updates that just came out. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a Google Classroom here. And I'm going to show, um, I'm going to use Screencastify to record as if I were showing somebody this new feature, which by the way, the new feature is the ability to assign work to individual students rather than to the entire class or to group groups of students instead of the whole class. So that's a really neat thing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, run through the process of using Screencastify as if I am doing an instructional video. I'll, you know, pause throughout and kind of explain some of the things uh, that I'm clicking on just as a review. All right, so let's try it out. So I'm going to head up to Screencastify, give a click on there. And as you see, it brings down that uh, little pop down window, like we mentioned, I can record the tab, I can record the entire desktop, or I can record just my webcam. I'm just going to do the tab because I'm just recording what's inside of this tab here. It's already picked up my microphone, I can tell because the little lines are moving up and down next to it. And I can decide if I want to embed my webcam. I certainly don't have to. Uh, maybe I'll do that on another example. Um, for now, it might get in the way from some of the stuff I'm trying to demonstrate here. But again, it's nice having it there to kind of personalize you. If you do want to do that, you just click that button and you choose which corner you want to put your webcam in. Uh, I'm not going to, though, for this example. Um, and then let's see, I think that's it. We're good. I'm going to go ahead and click record tab and it's going to count down and start recording. All right, so in this example, I'm going to show how to use the new feature in Google Classroom to um, push out assignments to individual students or to groups of students rather than to the entire class. This is a wonderful new feature we've got in Google Classroom. Um, at the same time, I'm also demonstrating Screencastify, so uh, please notice it is recording the screen at the moment, but down in the bottom left-hand corner are those special tools I had mentioned just a while ago. So I've got things like a pin that lets me write on the screen. If I click the pin, I can come in here and I could, um, you know, draw right on the screen. If I click the eraser, I can come in and erase what's on the screen in that spot. Or I can wipe the whole screen clean. There's also a, uh, a button here that lets me uh, erase everything on the screen. Um, there's also, if I come over here, let me get back to my pointer. There we go. There's also what I mentioned, which was the focus mouse. It's kind of like a spotlight, the show hide mouse focus. If I click that, what it does is it darkens everything else out except for what I am pointing at. So that's a good one if I wanted to say, okay, so if you want to use this new feature in Google Classroom, head on down to the plus button in the bottom corner and go up to create assignment. After you click that, you'll get your normal create assignment screen. And here, what you're gonna do is put in your normal information. We'll just call this sample uh, essay. And then um, you can put in, of course, your instructions and your due date, and you can, you know, attach everything like you normally would from Google Drive. But what's different, what I want to point out to you is that you have now an all students drop down up here that allows you to send this out to all your students. Or if you uncheck that, you can come down student by student, say this is going to go out to student two, student four, and student seven, for example. And now that I've done that, when I do come down and assign this, it is only going to be assigned out to that group of students rather than all of them. And I'll click assign and away it goes. And now if I want to turn off that spotlight feature, just come back down and click on it again and it turns it off. And that's it, as simple as that. Uh, you can now uh, differentiate assignments in classroom to your students.
Now, when I'm all done doing the recording, um, I would come back up to the Screencastify um, icon, like we mentioned, give a click on that, and from that drop down, I will now click End Recording. Now, I couldn't pause. I can pause if I just need to take a quick break, and it'll start right back up again. Remember, you got 10 minutes for free recording, okay? So I could pause it and then start back up again. In this case, I'm just going to hit End Recording. And that's it. It's now done. And I'll let you hear. Uh, I'll put this over here so you can hear what it's doing. Feature in Google Classroom to um, push out assignments. And so as you can hear there, that is actually uh, the recording. I'm just going to pause this here. You don't need to play that whole thing. Uh, but that's it. There's my, there is my uh, Screencastify recording. As simple as that. Very, very, very simple. It has uh, recorded that for me. I'd probably want to come up here on the top and give it a name. So maybe uh, how to uh, assign work to groups in classroom or something like that. All right, and hit close. And then you'll notice in the top right-hand corner, like we mentioned before, it automatically is saving this to Google Drive. And now that that is just done, it was pretty fast, it's already saved there, it's saved in Drive, I can now take this video that I've done and I can make it available to people in a number of ways. So one option is to come here where it says copy link. And if I just hit that little link button right there below, it will turn on link sharing and it will copy that link right into memory. And so now this video has been shared um, so that anybody who has the link can view it. So basically, if I bring up that other, where's my other guy here? Let's bring this guy back up. We'll bring up my John Smith test here. So if I come here and I paste that link in, now it may not be totally done rendering, so I may be jumping the gun here. We'll, we'll see if it's totally done yet. If not, I'll just, uh, we'll refresh it in a second here. It may, uh, oh, yep, it's still processing. That's fine. Be patient, Eric. It is still processing. It is uploaded to Drive, but Drive does a little post-process processing on it afterwards. Uh, we'll bring that back up here again in a second. We'll let it finish what it's doing. Um, but that's one option is just to come to the copy link button here and copy the link. And now you can email that out. You can post it on your website. You can you know put it in classroom. You can you know put it into a doc and that link will let anybody view that video. Um, other options I could have now that I'm done up here in the top right, you'll also see a download button. Even though I didn't tell it to initially save to my drive or to my hard drive, I can still do that. I can still download this video to my hard drive because maybe I want to take it and do some other editing with it. Maybe I've got, you know, um, Camtasia and I want to run it through that and do some additional edits to it. Perfectly fine. Just download it and away you go. Or there's a share button right here. If you click that, that will allow me to do things like post it to YouTube. So if I come here and select my channel, have to have a YouTube channel, obviously. Um, but if I, you know, grabbed my channel out of the list here and chose YouTube, I could upload this straight to YouTube right from Screencastify. So I wouldn't have to go over to YouTube and upload it separately there. So that would work as well. Now, there is a button here for cropping and trimming. That is one of the premium features, so that would not be part of uh, the free version. Uh, just be aware that is an upgrade feature there. And then, of course, delete. So we could delete it if we didn't want it anymore. Now, just so we don't get confused about what's really happening behind the scenes, this video, it really is just in our Google Drive. So if I were to come here and open up my Google Drive, you'll notice I'm going to have a Screencastify folder. Now, nobody teased me about all my folders here. I know it's a little bit of a mess, but not too bad. If I scroll down here, you will see a Screencastify folder over here on the left. And these are all of my Screencastify videos here. And they're basically just saved right there to a Screencastify folder in Google Drive. And so they're really just files. Um, just like anything, just like any doc would be a file, I can come in here and click on one of these videos. And this is the one we just did right now. And if I right click and go into share, you'll see it, that link sharing has been turned on. Anyone with the link can view. I could grab one of my other videos from earlier, go into share on that, and I could either share it with specific people or I could get the shareable link there as well. So if you forget while you're in Screencastify to get the link there, that's okay. Just go to your drive. All your videos are there. You can just come in, right click on it, go to share, and you can set up link sharing or share with specific people right there. Let's see if it's done rendering now. Let's go back over to our uh, user here again and let's refresh this and see, yep, there it is. And so here is my John Smith user who now when he clicks the link, he can play that video and watch it right there. Simple as can be.
Very good. All right. So that's the basics. That's, you know, how to use in general Screencastify sort of from start to finish to install it, to run it, um, to use the drawing tools down in the bottom afterwards to give it a name, to um, get the shareable link, to download it, to put it on YouTube. Those are the basics. And in this example, we did it to show how you could use this for an instructional video. Okay. I'm going to pause for just a moment and see um, if there's any questions popping up and because we're going to move next into the fun, creative ways to use it. And I do see a couple of questions here. Um, one is, can you zoom in and out on the page while you're recording? Now, you could do that with um, what's built into Chrome, but there's nothing in Screencastify that does that. So if I was here in Google Classroom and I was recording, there's no Screencastify button that lets me do zooming. That's a great question. But don't forget, in Chrome, if you use the um, Control Plus and Minus buttons, so if I come here and I go Control Plus, that zooms in, and Control Minus zooms out, and Control Zero puts you back to normal. So. I would encourage that. That's probably a wise idea, especially like I, my resolution is pretty high on this monitor. So it may be hard to see, you know, that. so thank you for mentioning that. I really should have mentioned that. If I was to be doing this for um, a staff training thing, yes, I probably would have come in and I would have zoomed in a couple of times first <laughs> before I went ahead and started the recording because I want to make sure when they see me click create assignment that everything's really big and they can see it nice and easy. So I would, yes, I agree. I would go ahead and zoom in ahead of time um, or while you're doing it, you can zoom in and out as well. And again, I'm just using um, Chrome's features. That is not a Screencastify feature. That's just something I would do in Chrome myself. Um, other folks said um, that they're not seeing the drawing and pointing options. Is that a premium item? No, it's not a premium premium item. That is um, normal. Um, it might be hidden. Um, if you go to, oh boy, let me see. You guys have already asked me a question. I'm afraid I'm going to see if I can find it here. If I right click on Screencastify and go to the options, nope. Let me try that again. Screencastify options. I think there is drawing tools um nope that just shows that they're there um yeah see i'm gonna draw a blank on that now i believe maybe if i go to screencastify and go to do 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 do, do advanced oh, there it is okay sorry about that um couldn't remember where that was at so if i go to screencastify and i go to next to video there's an advanced little three little dots there there is a spot that says show tab drawing tools maybe that got unchecked that's possible um you can actually close out of them if you're um, let me go back to my slideshow uh right there there's an x to show hide also alt t is the um, shortcut for that so if you um, accidentally hide the toolbox alt t will um, switch you back and forth on that and again you can always get to those settings just by right clicking on screencastify and going to options and there's tons of settings in there the drawing tool shortcuts will show up in there so that's a way to get to that all right hopefully that helped um Okay, let's go ahead and keep on moving. So next up, um, that was number one. I'm now, ha ha ha, have half an hour <laughs> to get through six more. That's five minutes a piece. Yeah, we'll see <laughs> how that works. So let's try our best to show you six other creative ways to use uh, Screencastify. Okay, I'm going to close out a couple of my windows here so I don't have so much stuff going on here. All right, so let's go ahead and look at... Um, Number, oh, somebody said they just verified the above that the drawing tools only work in tab recording, not full desktop recording. Thank you so very much. See, that is the power of the chat doc. As people say so often, the smartest person in the room is the room. And so all of us together, uh, we will find the answers to these things. So that's another great reason to be using tab recording. The drawing tools do not show up in the full desktop uh, recording, but instead in tab recording. Good job. All right. Um, so what's another way that we can use screencasting? So this next one that I like to talk about is using it to narrate a Google slideshow. 
This is probably one of the most common questions we get when it comes to Google Slides is, is there a way that I can add narration to a slideshow? And natively, the answer is no. Uh, Google Slides does not have a audio recording narration thing. Now, there's creative little things you can do, you know, add a video, things like that, um, to try to accomplish that. What I think is a good option until, well, Google will add that someday, I'm sure, but until they do, what's a good option is to use Screencastify to narrate your slideshow. So if you're giving a presentation and you want to run through the slideshow, run Screencastify while you're doing it and narrate it. Um, this would be great for giving a presentation or reading a story. One of the things that I like to talk about with Google Slides is creating eBooks with your slideshows. Students can make um, their own uh, eBooks books where each slide is another page of the book and or comics. Uh, I do a lot of trainings on using Google Slides to create comics where each slide is a panel of the uh, comic strip. And I've actually got um, resources linked in below the video that will take you to that stuff. And I've done webinars on those. So if you go to um, our uh, recorded trainings, you will see that I've got one on creating comic strips with Google Slides and one with creating storybooks with Google Slides. So lots of resources there if you want to try that out. The idea is if a student does that, if they make a storybook or an ebook or a comic strip, what they can do is they can run that slideshow within the tab and basically just narrate it using Screencastify. And when they're done, ta-da, they've got a video that can now be shared out through Google Drive that will allow people to see that comic book or storybook or presentation with their narration. So let me do a quick example for you guys here on this. I'm going to grab a slideshow and bring it over here. Now this one, give it a second here to load up, here it comes. So this one was uh, actually used in the previous training I did on creating storybooks with Google Slides um, called My Pickup Has Hiccups. And so this is a, um, a uh, um, an ebook, uh, a, like a storybook that a student could have created. I actually created this one myself. So if you want to look inside the mind of Eric and what makes him tick, well, you may get a little piece of that <laughs> here as we go through this. So this is one of my uh, fun kids poems I've, I've written. Um, now, here's my suggestion for you. If you're going to do this, you want to run the slideshow so it fills up the entire tab. You don't really, I would not, I would not record it like this where I click things on the side because what's going to happen is Screencastify does not have an option to record just a region of the screen. So I can't say, oh, let's turn on Screencastify, but only record this region here. It doesn't do that. It's going to grab the whole tab. So I'm going to get all this other stuff on the side. So my recommendation if you're doing that is do the publish to the web option. And what I mean by that is create your slideshow, go file, come down to publish to the web over here on the left, and then click the publish button. And what that does is it creates a special link for your slideshow. Come in and copy that link. Now, what's so special about that link? Well, basically, it's a link that if somebody clicks it, it will launch straight into a full tab version of your slideshow. So instead of people coming in and having to, you know, click through the slides, it'll go straight into full tab mode. So if I copy that link, open up a new tab, and simply paste that link in, it's going to open up my slideshow full tab. And that's how I share all of my slideshows. If you're on my website on Control Alt Achieve and you, um, click on any of my slideshows, you're going to find out that that's what I've done with all of those is I've uh, linked them in as published to the web version. So they go open uh, to full screen when you go to run them. Okay. So with that there now, I could go ahead and uh, close out that. I could go ahead and run Screencastify and I could narrate my slideshow. So let's try that out. And again, I probably would just stick with the screen and not the cam. Now you could. I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get in the way. Oh, well, we'll try it out. I'll go ahead and say I'm going to embed my webcam and we'll go ahead and tell it to put it in the top right hand corner. Hopefully that'll be out of the way. We'll see uh, when we're done if that kind of stays out of the way there. But that's the idea is if you want to include yourself in there, you certainly can uh, by choosing embed webcam and it'll just put a little, uh, a little uh, corner there with you in, in your webcam. So let's go ahead and I'll hit record tab and we'll try this out. 
Oh, there I am up there. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, so here's my story. My pickup has hiccups, my air curts. My pickup has hiccups, it jiggles and it jerks. The gear stick is quite sick, it very rarely works. Its spark plugs have flu bugs, they cannot make a spark. The emergency brake has a headache, it will not stay in park. My hubcaps must take naps or they will fall right off. The carburetor and radiator both have a terrible cough. The windshield has not healed, I can't see through the glass. And the motor has an odor, I think it's full of gas. A bad cold in the manifold has stuffed up the ignition, but don't panic, my mechanic is also a physician. And there we go. All right, we'll go ahead and finish the recording. And there it is. And again, I won't really play that uh, back. But as simple as that, students could, like we said, they could narrate a story or a comic strip or just give their presentation. And that's not a bad idea for you know students who might be a little bit shy about giving a presentation. This could be another way for them to do that without having to actually be up in front of everybody. We're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail in another one of our examples. All right, we're going to keep moving. Uh, if you want more details on that, though, um, uh, uh, below the uh, uh, the uh, video today, there are more resources on how to do uh, uh, ebooks with Google Slides. All right, what's the next one? The next example I'm going to show is uh, having students explain their understanding. Now, here's what I mean by this. When I say that, what I'm talking about is having students talk through how they solved a problem or um, explain their understanding of a lesson in class or give their summary of the latest chapter of the book that you've been having them read for class. Um, or explain why they wrote what they wrote in the essay that they're turning in. Now, the idea behind this is this allows students to really put themselves into the assignment that they're turning into you. Uh, a lot of great things can come from that. If as a teacher, all I'm getting, I'll just use math as an example. If all I'm getting from the students is a math worksheet where they've solved some problems, um, I'm not totally sure that I can get all the information out of there that I'd like to. So for example, um, if they're making a mistake, I might not know why they're making a mistake. Or if everything's right, for all I know, their mom or dad <laughs> sat down with them at the table and was helping them with their homework, and maybe they still don't really understand it themselves, but somebody else did the homework for them or helped them through it, which is, hey, I'm glad they're getting the help, but maybe I don't know that they really understand it. Instead, allowing students to explain their understanding with a Screencastify video is a wonderful way to see, do they really understand what we're doing in class? Um, it allows me to hopefully catch misconceptions that they might have and get into some of those higher level thinking skills that we can't get from just a worksheet. And honestly, total truth here, I would much rather have a math assignment where a student explains how to add unlike fractions one time than do a worksheet where they do 20 unlike fraction addition problems in a row. Seriously, I'd rather them just tell me how to show me one and talk through it so I know that you understand it rather than just do busy work and do 20 of them in a row on paper. That gives me so much more information there. This can also be a really nice way to address cheating concerns. And we hear that a lot of times when we talk about living in a digital world with Google Apps and sharing and collaborating. It's like, well, maybe they just copied somebody else's work. Maybe they just shared the document. Yes, that, that definitely can happen. I've done an entire webinar entirely on cheating in Google Apps, and there's a link to that below uh, the video as well. Um, but the point is, yeah, kids can cheat pretty easily if your assignment is just fill out this worksheet. But it's a lot harder to cheat if you've got to talk, if you have to explain things. This is a wonderful way to address that by having students do quick videos. They don't be long at all. It could just be a very short video where they explain their understanding. Well, you can't copy that. You know, you, you, that's you talking. So let's try that for a quick example here. And for this one, and again, you could do this a million different ways. For this one, I'm going to use 
uh, a math problem. I'm just going to do it as a math problem. And actually, let me drag this over. I'm going to use a whiteboard tool called um, A Web Whiteboard. It's just a w w a p p dot com. A Web Whiteboard is the name of it. Very very simple. And um, what I'll do is I'm going to record as I draw on this as if I'm a student explaining how to solve a problem. Now again, this could be done, I'm just using this, you could do this in anything. It does not have to be a, a whiteboard like this. Uh, this could be a student again, talking about the essay they wrote and they could have the essay up on the screen and they could be going down explaining why they wrote it. It could just be the webcam, does not, not even the whiteboard, it could just be the student's face talking about the latest chapter of the book Wonder, you know, that, that you've been reading in class, um, you know, whatever the case might be. For this example though, uh, I'm going to hit the Screencastify button and I'm just going to record the tab and I won't embed the webcam, I'll just record the tab and I'll go ahead and show you what this could look like. All right, so oh, here it's still counting now. All right, all right. So I'm going to show you how to solve uh, the math problem we had for homework tonight. So I'm going to pick um, uh, black to uh, write in, and I'm going to pick a little bit of a smaller uh, uh, size there. And let's say the problem was two x plus five equals thirteen. And um, we have to solve for x. And so the idea is, let me switch to red here to show what I'm doing. I've got to get x all by itself. Well, it's not by itself because there's a 2 attached to it and a 5 attached to it. The 2 is multiplied by the x and the 5 is added to the x. And um, we know by order of operations that multiplication comes first and then addition comes second. So first the 2 got multiplied onto it, then a 5 got added onto it. If I want to get the x by itself, I've got to undo that. I've got to go backwards. So from the outside in, I first got to get the plus 5 off of it, which means I need to do the inverse operation. I need to subtract a 5. Now if I do that to one side of the equation, it's like a teeter-totter. It's like a balance here. This side equals that side. It's okay to do that as long as I do the same thing to both sides. So let's see, a plus 5 and a minus 5, poof, poof, that's going to cancel out. And now I'm going to have a 2x left all by itself on this side. And over here on this side, I'm going to have an 8. And so I'm almost done there. Now, it's a really bad 8. Um, I'm now going to get rid of the 2. Now remember, it's attached by multiplication, so I need to divide. That would undo. That's the inverse operation. Well, again, if I divide on one side, i got to divide on the other to keep the teeter-totter balanced. 2 times x, and then divided by 2, those will cancel out. And finally, the x will be left alone, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. And so that's how I solved my problem. And now the student can come up here, click Screencastify, hit End Recording. And once they're done with that, let me pause that. All the student has to do is come right over here where it says Google Drive Copy Link. Well, they should give it a title, of course, and <laughs> give it a title. Come over here where it says Google Drive Copy Link, click the button, and as simple as that, it has now copied that link. They just send me the link. They email it to me. They go to Classroom and they submit it through Classroom. Whatever method is the easiest to get that link to me. And as simple as that, I now can go in and hit play and I can watch their video as they talk through a very detailed explanation of how they solved that problem. All right, let's keep going. Next up. Dubbing a video. Ha, ah, here's a fun one. Okay, so here's the idea with this one. What you can do is you can have students take existing videos that are already out there and uh, play them on mute. And while the video is muted, they can use Screencastify to record the video and their voice dubbing over it. This could be a really fun activity. So, for example, it could be used for translation. You could say, play the video and it's in, you know, English, you need to replace all the dialogue with the correct Spanish or French or whatever it might be, or vice versa. Here is, you know, a, a video on YouTube. It's a, it's a Spanish video or a French video. It's a news broadcast. You need to dub over it in English. Or it could be that you're reinterpreting um, a story. You know, maybe um, you're going to um, play a clip from Hamlet and you're going to replace all the dialogue with modern dialogue. You're going to, uh, you know, uh, put in your own uh, text there, your, your own dialogue, uh, to make it um, you know, more understandable. 
um, with 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 uh, with modern uh, words. Um, or maybe you're just adding commentary to a video. You want to bring up a video that shows a scientific process, or um, that um, you know shows an animal doing something, and you want to add commentary to it. Or you want to grab a video uh, clip from a movie you really like and explain what you like about that part of the story. So the idea is basically we're going to play a video full tab again so we have it nice and big on the screen, but we also want to mute it so that it doesn't actually make its own noise. And then we basically use Screencastify to record that video with ourselves talking over it. Now, I'm going to show this to you really quick. I do have right below the live video a link that goes out, as all of these do, and I haven't brought each of these up, but every one of those, there's a link below the live video that will take you out to a blog post I've done on my Control-Alt-Achieve site, where I go into gory detail on exactly how to do each and every little bit of this. Um, so um, for this example, I'm going to do the same one I did for um, the blog post, and let me go ahead and grab the video here, and I will pull it over. So this is the original video that I'm going to use, and this is a Creative Commons available video. I made sure I searched for videos that I was allowed to use, and this is just a short video of a chinchilla taking a dust bath. And so let's say that's the video that I want to dub over. Well, the problem is if I just click full screen, it's going to cover the whole screen and I won't even be able to see Screencastify. What I want to do is I want to make the video run full tab, not full screen. So uh, for what it's worth, you can actually do that just by changing the URL up here. And what it comes down to, if you want to see the gory details of it, um, is that you replace the word watch with the word embed and put a little slash after it. Um, so if I come up here and instead of it saying watch, if I instead have that say embed with a little slash after it so that all that's left is that, it will actually put that video full in my tab. Simple as that, just changing the... Um, uh, the, the text in the URL from watch to embed, and again, putting a slash before the unique code for uh, the YouTube video. And at that point, I could go down, uh, once I hit play, I could go down and I could mute the video so it doesn't make any noise of its own, and I could use Screencastify to record it. Now, if you really want to get fancy, folks, I have actually in that blog post added one more little fun thing for you. And again, this is right there in that blog post. If you go to the links below or just go to controlaltachieve.com and just search for video dubbing. And I or I think there's a shortcut. I think my short URL is controlaltachieve.com slash dub, D-U-B. That'll take you right to this post. Uh, but in there, I've got a, um, uh, a Google Sheet template that'll actually make this life, make your life easier on this. If you have a, um, let me grab my ch grab the chinchilla video again, the raw link for it. Let me copy the raw link here. Uh, let me go back and copy it. Okay, so here's the raw link to the video. If I come in here and I copy this raw link, um, I've created a, a Google Sheet UR, uh, YouTube URL generator uh, template um, that's in the blog post. If you come here and you paste in the um, YouTube link, it will automatically fix that code for you and make it embed instead of watch. And it also has the option to say when to start and stop it. So if you said, you know what, I want to start five seconds in and then I want to stop, you know, 20 seconds in, it'll actually uh, make that code for you with the uh, embedding. So it goes full tab and also the start and stop time. So if you really want to get fancy, just use that and it will redo that URL for you and that'll save you a lot of time. All right. Well, let me go ahead and show you how this works. So here's the video. What I'm going to do is I'll hit play here and I'm going to pause it for a second and I'm going to come down here and mute that. So now it's muted. Okay. So now that I've got the YouTube video and I've got it muted, I'm just going to come up here and go ahead and click Screencastify and I'm going to record this tab. I uh, don't need myself embedded there, but I'm just going to go ahead and record the tab. Now I could also uncheck tab audio if I didn't want Screencastify to catch the YouTube video noise, but I like to mute it so it doesn't distract me either, <laughs> because if I'm hearing it, that's going to be confusing. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit record tab, let it count down, and click on the video. 
So in this video, you're going to see a chinchilla taking a dust bath. Uh, chinchillas actually do not bathe in water. Instead, they roll around in a special dust that is like the volcanic ash that they are used to in their natural environment. They come from the Andes Mountains in South America, and the dust helps keep them clean, but also to remove oils that would damage their coat. All right, and as simple as that, it's done. There is the video, and you can hear my my narration. Bathe in water. Instead, they roll around in a special dust that is like the ball. There you go. And so that's the idea of dubbing videos. That can be a real fun activity as well for students. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> all right, can we get through them all? Next up, uh, giving a speech or a performance. All right, so uh, this is similar to what we talked about earlier as far as um, um, when we said having students explain um, a problem or explain why they wrote something in an essay or explain um, you know what they liked about a chapter, but this is more for the actual, typically I'm gonna stand up in front of the class and give a speech. I need to give a speech, I need to play an instrument, um, I, I need to sing a song, so for a speech performance. This would be a great chance to use Screencastify and maybe just use the webcam to just record you speaking. Um, this could really help with students that are nervous or shy um, who are really concerned about standing up in front of a class because they could do their speech, they could play their song, they could play their instrument, and they could record it and then share that instead. Now, maybe eventually you want them to stand up in front of the class and do this, but maybe this is a really good scaffolding move toward that. It's gonna help them get more comfortable with that. And not only this, guys, but just for a secret, if you have kids do this, I guarantee you they're going to do it more than once. You want them to practice their speech 10 times, let them record themselves because they're going to want it to be perfect and they will. They'll record it in Screencastify 10 times until it's just right. Or play their instrument, you want them to play that song 20 times, have them record it because they will keep doing it until it's right because they've got the safety of being in their room doing this and they can keep trying it until they get it right. So basically what I would do, and I am not going to sing <laughs> for anybody here today, that is not going to happen, uh, but basically what you could do is just open up a tab, go up to Screencastify, and choose the cam option instead. So basically you're just going to use camera instead of tab um, and it's going to grab your webcam there and your microphone and we'll just try it out real quick so you can just see an example of this. So we'll hit record cam, webcam. All right, so howdy everybody. Um, this is now recording my webcam. Um, I could have it show a preview window so I can see what is being recorded there. It'll show it down there at the bottom so I have an idea of what's being recorded. Howdy there. Um, when I'm all done, I just hit end recording and it should be just uh, my webcam. Let's try that out. This is now recording my webcam. Um, I have and there it is. And so if I were giving a speech, if I were giving a, um, a speech or presentation or playing an instrument, um, this would be a great way to do that and record it. And not to embarrass him, but my son, one of my sons, actually I had him do this for a uh, in-service I was doing for music teachers. So I'm gonna bring up his real quick. It's so cute. Uh, so this is Grant and um, had him play hot cross buns and what we did was we brought up the sheet music on the screen and so instead of just recording the webcam we actually recorded the screen and we recorded Grant as he was uh, playing hot cross buns we did this as a demonstration for music teachers so let's try this out I'll show you what it looks like so you can see Grant up here and he's gonna play good job very nice all right, very, very small, simple example there, but that was him showing uh, that he could play hot cross buttons, uh, and uh, we uh, used Screencastify to record that. All right, so I'm moving a little bit quicker here when I try to get through the last couple. Uh, so the next one, and we're almost at the end, I think this is number six, and we've got one more after that, and that is practicing 
fluency. So um, Screencastify could be a great way for uh, students to practice reading and speaking. So this could be great for young students who are still learning to read. This could be great for ELL students or for students studying world languages. Basically, as a teacher, you would provide the student with the reading. Maybe it's a Google Doc. Fantastic. Maybe it's a website that has text on it. That's great. Whatever it might be. And the student would basically go through reading that and recording themselves as they read it. Uh, what's great about this is the teacher can, of course, play that back whenever it's convenient for them, but they can also replay it. So if there is a problem, if a student is making a mistake, it's a great way to be able to go in and play it back and hear that again and say, now what is it that they're saying there? Where's the mistake? Or if it is um, maybe a, a special needs student and you need to uh, you know, show the parents, well, here's, here's where we're noticing this problem. Or again, if it's younger students and you wanna be able to monitor as their fluency improves over time. So for an example, uh, let me grab a um, French website and I'll pull this up real quick to show you. All right, so uh, here is a French website with some French text on it. And um, I did take French uh, back in high school, but that's been, oh heavens, 30 years ago. <laughs> so uh, I don't remember it very well. So um, Sylvia Duckworth, if you are listening to this, I'm going to apologize in advance for what I'm about to do to your language. Um, so I apologize, but the idea would be I could come in here as a student and click on screen, whoops, click on Screencastify. And maybe what you would do is have the student record the tab and maybe even tell them to use the little um, focus on mouse button so it darkens everything else out and just shows the mouse and they could move across the text as they read it. That could be an example. So let's go ahead and we'll uh, record the tab. And I'll use the focus on the mouse. And we'll go, um, J'aime la salade, mais je n'ai pas de laitue. Sorry, I'm sure that was very bad. <laughs> but there we go. And I'll turn that off. And then I'll come up here and I will end my recording. Now, obviously, the students would record a whole lot more than that. But that's the idea is they could move through move through the Google document, they could move through the website, and they could be reading it. And as they move their mouse or they use the highlighting tool there uh, to do that, you could hear them at your convenience again, you know, listen to that over and over again. Or if somebody else needed to get involved, maybe you got a speech therapist who needs to hear it as well. You could share that video over to them and they could hear that and play it back through as they need. All right. And lastly, final one here, we are gonna run over just about a couple minutes, so I apologize, folks, but hang tight. We'll keep this as close to an hour as I can. The final option I'm gonna share with you guys is providing feedback to students on their work. Most everything we've talked about so far today has been students doing things, which is really what I was hoping this would be. I, I, that's the main focus is let's get kids using the technology. This last one is probably more for teachers, but kids could do this too. They could. This could be a great way for them to leave feedback. Uh, there was a great article today um, I was reading about the value of student uh, feedback for other students about peer, peer review. Great article. Um, it was talking about how important that is. So this could also be used for students leaving feedback for each other, honestly. I don't, I, mean, I don't see why it couldn't be used for students just as well as teachers. But this one definitely does lend itself well to teachers. And the idea is you could bring up your students' work, you know, their Google Doc that they've written, and instead of you typing in uh, feedback, which is fine, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that here. Let me grab, um, I'll grab the document I'm gonna use as an example here. Let me come over and I will, uh, pull this doc up. This is just a sample George Washington report. Uh, we'll say that the student has written this. Um, sure, I could come in and I could highlight some text and I could go in and I could add comments. That's perfectly fine. That's great. Or you could use read and write for Google to add voice comments. That's excellent. I actually did an entire webinar just on this recently and there's a link here that will take you out to that on four different ways to leave feedback in Google Docs. And you know, so there's lots of great ways. But what's neat about using Screencastify with this, again, it's easy easy and fast. You don't have to write anything, type anything, just talk. <laughs> just open up your student's document or have the kids open up each other's if they're leaving peer feedback. Come up here, click on the Screencastify icon, and go ahead and hit record tab, and just 
talk to the student and highlight things and point things out. Again, you might want to use that little focus tool if that helps. That's certainly fine. Don't have to. But you could say something like, oh, great job on this report. I noticed a couple of things. Um, uh, for example, here, oh, actually, I will use the little highlighting tool. Here, um, I see you've missed some punctuation. We do need a period at the end of that sentence. So double check your punctuation throughout this. Um, also, some verb tense issues here. You've got they own a plantation. That should be past tense. You're going to want to correct that. And as we scroll down here, I did also notice what looked to me like a run-on sentence. Uh, Washington was a farmer. Like his father, his large farm, a plantation was called Mount Vernon. I would definitely break that into two sentences there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the thing is, it's so easy just to scroll down through the student's document and leave feedback for them instead of typing things up. Now, when that's all done, I just come up to Screencastify again, as always, give it a click in the recording. And then what I would do at that point is I would come over here to the Google Drive link, click copy link, pop right back over to the student's document, simply highlight something in their document, click the add comment button and say, here is my feedback for you. I could spell for, that would probably be helpful. Sorry about that. <laughs> and go ahead and hit comment. And that's it, as simple as that. Now the student opens up their document, they click that link, boom, it plays the Screencastify video for them. And again, if it's students leaving feedback for each other, great way to do that as well. Shoo! We made it. All right. So uh, those were my ideas of seven really awesome ways to use screencasting um, in your classroom. I've got just a couple things to mention here at the end. I did promise that we had a uh, promo code from Screencastify. And so I'm going to drag that over so you guys have access to that. So um, what they're doing is if you want, again, Screencastify is totally free for the 10 minute at a time version. If though you were interested in the premium license, it's $24 a year. Uh, they're giving a, a month free. So if you want to try it out, try it out. Uh, Spark 17 is the promo code good through January 20th. Uh, so they just wanted to, they heard we were doing the webinar and wanted to let us uh, let folks know um, about this promo that you could use if you would like to do that. So I wanted to pass their generosity along to you. Um, in addition to that, I um, also promised to keep an eye on the uh, uh, Q&A doc. So I'm going to take a look over here and see if there's anything I have not answered that has not been answered. Uh, can you turn the highlighting tool on and off during the recording? Absolutely. Uh, as you saw me do, uh, you just when you're in the recording, you just go down and click on that little, um, it's called, uh, the actual name of the tool is... I think it's show hide focus. It's called show hide focus. Yes, each time you click on that, you can turn it on and off throughout there. Um, if you're making a training video and you mess up in the middle, <laughs> is there a way to back up and re-record that part only, or do you have to start uh, from the beginning? Um, there are no editing tools in the free version of Screencastify. In the paid version, there is some uh, splitting, cropping, trimming stuff. So actually, yes, in the paid version, you can do some post editing. Otherwise, you could always download the video and run it through a different tool. Like I've got Camtasia, for example, as a Google certified trainer, uh, they provide that to us. So I do have that tool and I can do some post editing with that. Or you start over again, <laughs> or, you know, you laugh it off because, you know, like these webinars, um, I do these live to hard drive, so to speak. And if I make mistakes, I make mistakes, you know, and that's life and you, and you move on. Let's put it this way, better done than perfect. And so if it's a matter of getting the information out there, um, it's better that you get it done than, it, than it's perfect. If you're always trying to make it perfect, you'll probably put out one tenth of the amount of content. Uh, and so uh, that's something to consider. Uh, let's see. Anything else there? Um, if we publish a slide presentation to the web, can we go back and change the presentation? If so, do we need to republish? Great question. Not a problem at all. If you have a Google slideshow and you've done publish to the web, anytime you make changes to the slideshow, it is automatically changing it for the published to the web version as well. It's not like a one-time snapshot that it that it does. So um, that is not a problem at all. The only thing would be if you made a change to it while it was up, like this one right here, the Screencastify slideshow I'm running. If I edited this right now, if I actually went in and let me grab the actual one. So here is the, um, here's the actual slideshow here. If I went in and actually made a change to this right now, 
Um, it would not like live show up on here. I'd have to refresh this. So like if I went to the questions and contact info slide and I came down to that, let me find it here. And if I, instead of, you know, questions um, like that, if I came in and I decided to make it red for no good reason, um, I can do that, no problem at all. But I would have to actually come in here and reload that page and then you would see the changes there. So yes, it, it, it does automatically update the live version, but you'd have to refresh it if you're in the middle of it. Uh, other than that, um, can you change tabs while you're recording in your browser? Yes, I do believe so. If you're doing Screencastify and it's just tab, it just means the current tab. So if I record this tab that I'm on, but I wanna move to a different tab, um, Oh, it says Screencastify is recording a tab in the background. Use the extension icon to switch the record focus to your current tab or use Alt-Shift-F. Ah, so if I move to another tab, it's still recording the other one and you can actually see a little icon in the top here that shows that's what's being recorded. But if I come up here, it sounds like I can tell it to record this tab instead and so it switches focus over to the new one. Ah, or they said use control, use um, shift alt F it sounded like to do that. Oh my goodness, how about that? I've learned something new as well. That's always a fun thing to do. Um, I think, boy, I hope I got them all guys. And I apologize. If I ended up missing any of your questions, I'll try to go back through the Q and A document to fill some of those in. But I think, I think, I think I got, um, all of those in there. So as we wrap up here today, <laughs> um, as a final reminder, um, all of the resources uh, for this session can be found at tiny.cc slash spark241. That will again uh, take you to the page where the um, recorded video will show up. Below there are all of the resources from this training, including links out to all those blog posts I talked about where you can get all my other training videos and help guides there. Um, there's a session evaluation. Would love to get your feedback as always. And give me just a couple minutes. I'll get this updated to have the link to the quiz You'll have to refresh the page once I do that. It's not done yet. Give me just a few minutes and I'll put that there. You can take the quiz to get your one hour certificate of attendance for that. Uh, while you're on the site, definitely check out the PD schedule for other upcoming trainings. I've got one in two weeks on four fun literacy activities with Google Docs. So fun ways to teach literacy with Google Docs Some really neat things in there. And of course, the recorded trainings will have all of the past ones. Um, those include mine as well as my uh, colleague, Anthony, who has returned tired. For those that don't know that, Anthony is not with us anymore, but his webinars are still there. Or if you head over to controlaltachieve.com, which is my blog, um, that is also um, uh, there at controlaltachieve.com. That is also where you can find just my webinars pulled out separately, as well as my upcoming ones. While you're there, definitely check out my resources tab where I have all of my resources pulled together for each of the different Google products and subject areas. And definitely check out the blog. I try to put usually about two new posts a week there. And uh, you can catch all sorts of new things while you're there. So again, guys, thank you so very much for being here today. Really appreciate you taking the time. I'm sorry we went, went over by just a few minutes there, but it was good stuff to squeeze in. So thanks again for taking the time uh, to watch the this session. I uh, hope to see you again uh, in the coming weeks for more educational technology webinars. Take care.